So I definitely have gone the non-traditional route. Like I don't know many people who have done what I have done. So mm. um, uh, there are some things I would recommend, probably some things that I would not recommend. Um, but yeah, I started um, when I moved into the neighborhood I'm in now, which was, uh -huh. I guess I started lessons around 2016, just teaching out of my home. Um, and it was just word of mouth. You know, I didn't even, I didn't have a website. I didn't have any kind of CRM. I didn't have, you know, I was like literally just kind of like making a calendar, writing in when I would have lessons and just trust that they would give me the right amount. You know, it was just very disorganized and just super low key. Um, but it was very successful. Like before I knew it, I had a lot of students. Mm -hmm. So then I had a waiting list and I thought, gosh, I, my schedule's never going to clear. I'll never be able to teach any more students because I was completely maxed out at the time. So I thought, well, why don't I put a digital piano upstairs in my husband's office and hire a teacher? So I did. I hired a teacher and she instantly had like 35 students. So then we had another waiting nice. list. So you can see where this is going, maybe. <laughs> so I thought, hmm, I could put a piano in my daughter's bedroom and hire another teacher. So I did that. And then in the meantime, yeah. people were asking me, well, do you teach voice? Do you teach drums? Do you teach guitar? Do you teach ukulele? So that got me thinking, well, hmm, <laughs> I don't, but I could hire. At this point, I was like, feeling pretty good. Fortunately, I had really good first tires. I was just, it was just, I was super mm -hmm. lucky. Um, nice. so I started reaching out to other teachers who also taught other instruments. And so my house started getting really crowded. So I thought, you know, I just yeah. need to send How many more rooms that we have. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right. <laughs> well, I, I ended up with pianos in, in every room. Yes. So it, it got really uh -huh. crazy. And at one point, so I had two pianos downstairs that I would teach on. So the room, mm -hmm. and that was right by the front door. So it's kind of like the formal living room is where I had the two grand pianos. And then the formal dining room was right, right by the front door as well. I mean, it's just right in that same area. And I thought, hmm, mm -hmm. if I get rid of the dining room table, I could put six digital pianos there and start group piano classes. So I did that. Nice. So then I was able to t condense my students down into um, fewer hours. And then get one of the other bedrooms. I thought, well, okay, I'll put a few more pianos in there. I can squeeze in. I can do <laughs> some kids. I have four kids. So we put two kids in one bedroom. I was like, okay, this can be a, this can be a studio room upstairs. Uh -huh. um, so yeah. So then it got to the point where my house was so crowded. So I needed to send teachers out to students' homes. So I started doing that. So that allowed me to just yeah. hire more teachers and teach more students in the neighborhood. And the parents really yeah. liked that luxury of having a teacher just come to them, even though we're all in the same yeah. neighborhood. Um, at, at this point with when you started sending teachers to students homes, like how many, how many students did you have like total for the music school? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Probably around 150, 150 to 180. Mm, um, okay. Yeah. And so the max for me has been around 250 ish uh -huh. with about um, maybe 15 to 20 teachers is kind of yeah. where I tend to, you know, hang out right okay. now. Yeah. What happened next? Um, so then the pandemic hit. Mm. Um, so everything moved online. Um, well, actually, no, take that back. The, our house got so full of students. My family said, we can't really live like this anymore. This is really, like we're living in a school. Because at that point, yeah. I think, I don't remember how many, how many exact pianos I had, but my family was like, you know, we need to live like in our own home. So <laughs> we bought uh -huh. another home in our neighborhood and we moved into that one to live in that one. And then the house that we were originally in became kind of the studio house. And my mother-in-law decided at that point to move in. And, and she had, oh. she lived in the master bedroom and then I took over the rest of the house. So at that point we had 21 pianos in that house because then wow. I just really <laughs> went to town. Every bedroom had six pianos and every teacher yeah. could teach group. Um, and then we could have drums and all the other instruments um, could, mm -hmm. could then we could have a building even though it was a home for students to come to, we could do choirs, we could do larger group 
um, activities. And that is the house where I would have recitals. So fortunately, the layout allowed for me to do that. So it was just nice. a nice, big, huge open floor plan once you got past the front door area where I'd kind of crammed some pianos in. So yeah, that worked yeah. out really well. So then the pandemic hit, everybody went online and we got stuck in Costa Rica. That's another story in itself for seven months. So when I returned, the market was really hot in the area that we're in, in Texas. So we decided, okay, we just couldn't really see what the future held. A lot of everybody was still really online. So we thought, well, let, we're in a good position. Let's sell the home because mm -hmm. we can sell it and we don't have to turn around and buy anything. We can just sell it and everybody can stay online or going into teachers. were still going into students' homes if that was a comfortable situation for everybody. Makes sense. Yeah. So, um, so then, then I kind of felt homeless. I thought, oh, this isn't like I've lost my big facility, so to speak, you know? So uh -huh. I hung out like that for a couple of years. Um, and then everyone started to trickle back to wanting to be on in back in person. So I thought, oh, I've got to find a space, but I can't do what I did before. I can't do that to my family. I can't start stacking mm -hmm. pianos in the home yeah, that we're bring, in. Yeah, more people. <laughs> they're going to be like, no, 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 we can't do that. So I found um, a house that was turned into a duplex that's outside of our HOA area of the uh -huh. neighborhood I live in. Um. And fun, funny fact, the owner used to be my husband's previous boss. So anyway, we already knew each other and they were like, Hey, yeah. you know, we're, our downstairs rental is coming up for rent. The, the lady's moving out. You know, and I was like, Oh, well, I'm interested. You know, if I can fit six pianos in a bedroom, <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm loving this so far. It's, it sounds like you're very, like, very resourceful. <laughs> I love it. So at that point, I thought, you know, in our neighborhood, we also need art classes and we also need dance classes. We also need sewing yeah. classes. Like there aren't there aren't any studios in my area. So I thought, mm -hmm. OK, now's the chance. I'm going to rebrand from Trevelis Music and I'm going to rebrand to Austin Arts Academy. And I'm going to hire art teachers. I'm going to hire a dance teacher and I hired a sewing teacher. So that wow. kind of, yeah. So we use, was that like all at once or you kind of like just added in each class? Like as it, so I started, I started with art first, um, yeah. before I did the rebrand and, sh and that art teacher actually helped me with my new logo and helped me with the rebrand, build the website. So she was very instrumental in kind of helping me, um, kind of launch the new look. Um, <laughs> so I started quietly with her. Um, and we weren't even doing classes. She was just kind of doing private lessons in students' homes just to kind of get her feet wet with materials and curriculum and kind of testing certain things like what what do we want art lessons to look like at our academy? Um, yeah. So then once we got into the space, um, then we could have classes. You know, we can have 10 kids at the same time in an art class. Um, mm -hmm. We can have eight kids sewing at the same time, like with their sewing machines. It's so amazing. So um, the dance was a little tricky because the space is not big enough for dance classes. You have to have a lot of room. Mm. Um, so I would rent space from the HOA, like in our community center, I would rent that out. So that's how I've kind of managed to, you know, just grow and expand um, the reach to more students with more yeah. Options. So is that what it is now? Like music, dance, arts and stuff like yes, that? Yes, that's what it is. Amazing. Yeah, that's what it is now. Um, and that's kind of one of the things that prompted me creating Music Game Club was oh. we needed, I, I'm super competitive and I love playing games. So just my nature is I'm drawn to making a game out of something or competing in some way. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted students to experience um, kind of that joy or the thrill of being in a competition, but also learning yeah. the art of strategy, because that's a life skill that you can also teach a child. But then at the same time, they're learning like a super important music theory concept. So mm -hmm. and it's really hard to find art and games these days. Well, forever and ever for all the time that I've been buying games or searching to buy games. Um, it's hard to find beautiful original art. Um, a lot of clip art is used in a lot of games and I wanted to 
do something completely different. Um, so yeah, so I, the artist that I was working for me over at Austin Arts Academy, I said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to build a new business. Do you want to jump ship and come over and <laughs> help me build it? And she said, I'm, I'm in, I'm all in. Nice. Yeah. So, um, so, so it's like starting music game club. Did it come out of like a problem you were experiencing or is it more of like just an interest yeah. that you have? Like how did that Well, get yeah. So music theory is super important. So that's one of our kind of core principles in the Austin Arts Academy is every student needs to be learning music theory. Okay. Well, so I can give every student that onboards a music theory workbook and the teacher has to teach the concepts out of that book or, mm -hmm. you know, just check their work to make sure that nothing's fallen, fallen in the cracks. But that's just a very dry way. <laughs> it's just not very relatable. It's not very fun. Like you're not laughing when you're doing music theory workbooks, right? Yeah, I know. Like, it's like doing your like it's like doing your algebra. Exactly. Or like that. I mean, it's so important, but it's like, ugh, it's not fun. So I wanted to kind of provide a resource for teachers where it's like, okay, you can do the workbook, but you could also just not even do the workbook at all and teach that same concept by playing a game. And after mm -hmm. you play that game a few times, so Music Game Club also has a, like a concept review sheet. So you can review the yeah. concept also. So we have like a little very mild worksheet that can kind of, um, nice. yeah, make sure that the student did retain the knowledge. Um, but I also wanted games that could cover beginners, that a beginner could play at the same time as, an, as a more advanced player. And that's tricky. Yeah. You cannot find games like that. Most of them are geared for beginners with very kind of babyish, very juvenile art that goes along with it. So uh -huh. a 13 year old is not going to want to sit down and play that. They're going to, yeah, you know, but they need to understand different types of chords and scale patterns. And um, so I was just like, well, we're just going to have to make what I can't find. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's been, it's been wonderful to, um, yeah. To, what's like, what's, what have you learned about like making these, making these custom games and, and, and what was it like in like the beginning of this to like now, like what, have, like how have you gotten even better at that over time? Gosh, I've really lucked out. So the art, the artist, you know, of course they're, that's what they do. Like the artist is so gorgeous. Every time they create a new game board and game pieces, like they're, they're mm -hmm. drawing and painting and watercolor and acrylic, like it's like, a, it's, it's amazing. Every time they, we yeah, come up with it a just new, cool to look yeah, at. every time we come up with a new concept and give that over to the artist, kind of walk her through the game. Um, and then she turns around and shows us rough drafts. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, like that's just absolutely gorgeous. So it's, it's really uh -huh. neat to see kind of something that um, Amanda is my project manager. So Amanda and, and I are both musicians. So we hash out what's the music theory concept and what's the game concept that we want, you know, is it going to be a mm -hmm. like a checker style game? Is it going to be like a candy land style game? Is it going to be a card game? So we kind of hash out what's going to work well to teach that music theory concept and then give the idea to the artist and then they just make it beautiful. Um, so yeah. one thing that has surprised me that I've noticed is, and I think it's because we're in a digital world where students are just on devices. I've noticed mm -hmm. that they just don't know things like playing playing card games or or if I reference, hey, this is this game is like Candyland, they just look at me like I've never even <laughs> heard of that. <laughs> and I, it's like I, I, yeah, that's so old school, I guess it's just not a thing anymore. <laughs> you know, same uh -huh. same thing like with checkers. You know, these teens kind of yeah. get deers in the headlight there and you know, I'm trying to explain to them Okay, so when you get up to a certain point you, and someone's blocking, like you can jump over them and remove them, and they just look at me like, "What? They've never." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm, never... I'm feeling, I'm feeling old now because, like, <laughs> and and just something simple is like holding a deck of cards, like holding cards in your hand. Some kids uh -huh. have never. I mean, it's like, wow, this is a really cool yeah. life skill that we're giving them, and just game <laughs> strategy. I'm all about game strategy, like you know, jumping in and and helping them see a few moves ahead, you know, like yeah. last night um, we were playing crow chords, which is a chord building game. So you get these uh -huh. 
um, cards. So you're collecting cards. And so if you want to build a C chord, you need a C card, an E card, and a G card oh, to build a C. Okay, okay. So, but my, so one of the students had, I think, a G, a D, and a C. And so I told her, I said, hey, this is great because you really, you only need an E or you need a B to complete the, the G chord or the C chord. So I clued her in onto like, you, you have something good going here because just with one card, you, potentially you could get one of the three chords. We were building C, F, and G chords. Um, but just little strategies like that. Um, yeah. Teaching, you know, even kids. Okay. Sometimes you can block another person from winning. I mean, that, uh, hey, <laughs> you know, and just <laughs> pointing that out, say, hey, strategically, I know we all think about, oh, I want to win, I want to win. But sometimes actually it's better if you don't win and you choose something that removes the win from somebody else, which gives you actually a better chance in the future. So just interesting. Yeah, really. Yeah. It's, it's been neat to, um, yeah, evolve the games and teach them to the kids. And it's not only the music theory concepts, but it's the life skill of like strategy and like paying attention, paying attention to not yeah. only what you're doing and the moves you're making, but also what other people are doing and the moves that they're making and the impact that yeah. we're all having on each other. <laughs> two, so. two things that are going on in my head is like, one, um, it's kind of good that these kids don't know what the original game <laughs> like is because then like, whoa, it's a completely new game. Right. 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 <laughs> but, but two, it's like, I, I, this is the thing like I wish I had growing up with piano lessons and things like that was, um, was like, I, I, I need to be taught or I, I need to be taught like how to love music mm -hmm. first. Yeah. And that's something that I was missing as a kid that I didn't find until I was in like high school until I started being in like marching band and, and making friends through music and things like that. Um, but what I really like about this is like, it, it's at the end of the day, it's just really fun. Yes. And that's what music should be. Yes. It should just be fun. And then the learning is a byproduct of that. Um, I feel like if, 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 uh, if I had that, I would have, I would have stayed in my piano lessons longer, yep. um, or more importantly, like I wouldn't have felt like I was forced right. to be in these lessons. Yeah. Our retention rates have increased because it just lessons are really fun. And yeah. the students really look forward. It's almost one of my group teachers was telling me the other day, she said, it's almost kind of like that carrot every, every, they're like, what game are we going to play today? And she's like, okay, we like last night she gave assessments and she does like a theory test and like assesses like where they are in their um, curriculum um, and gives them a theory test. So anyway, she goes, okay, you know, today's assessment day, but hey, Rebecca's going to come the last 15 minutes of class and teach us a new game. And they were just, uh -huh. you know, th so it's just, it's exciting for them. They, and they've, yeah. they've How told me, you know, I, we're, we are learning music things that are so fun, but it, it doesn't seem like a lot of work or it doesn't seem so dry and tedious. Like, oh, well, here's, here's a lecture about, you know, different types of chords. It's like, here's an augmented exactly. chord. Here's a diminished chord. Like no kid wants to like, he, you know, it's just not fun. But if you play <laughs> a game and your chameleon's eating the most bugs and you win, well, then it's fun. <laughs> it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. And I was going to, I was literally going to ask you about that too, because it seems like this would have a very positive effect on retention and yes. things like that. Like, I'd love to hear from you, like your experience when you first started implementing this in your lessons, like, what was that, what was kind of like the, the, the experience that you had as a teacher, your students had when you, you're just like implementing this, like versus before or without so, it. So, so I, I've always loved playing games and I'm super competitive and, mm -hmm. and I can find ways to just create games on just on a whim. Um, yeah. but not every teacher is like that. And not every teacher I've noticed in my studio, not every teacher wants to play games or thinks of playing games. And so mm. that's been kind of a learning experience for me as the owner of the studio is kind of encouraging them to do something new. Um, yeah. And all the time, once they finally get to playing the game, they're like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> I get yeah. how fun it is to sit down <laughs> on the floor with the student and laugh and, you know, have your kitten get to the piano first or whatever the game play is. Um, I, for some reason, you some, have any like memorable experiences right, some, or stories or something like that. Um, 
I personally don't, but I, I should ask some of my students or sorry, some of my teachers who were more hesitant um, oh, the, yeah, that'd be about cool. this, about more specifics behind that, because I have noticed that, you know, that it takes them a while to actually play the game. And then when they finally do, it's like oh. a, a new thing that I'm also doing is when I onboard new students, <laughs> they are issued a game. So, oh. so note reading game, keyboard geography games, they go home with their very first game. Like, so they can play with their parents mm -hmm. at home. And so it's already reinforcing the positive fun thing that happened in the lesson, but now they're getting to practice at home. And I don't know why I yeah. never thought of to do that before. I've had a few students that have loved the game so much that they've told their parents and the parents have asked, Hey, can we, can we just borrow that game for a little bit? Can we check it out? <laughs> I'm like, sure. You, of course you can, but I never really thought to purposely use it as an onboarding asset for each yeah. student. So I think moving forward, that's going to be, something that I'll, I will do for every student. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So with like, um, so, oh, can, can we backtrack sure. to like your, the first part of your story? Cause with that big change, I know it was kind of like the prologue to where you are now. Um, but I know that a lot of people, a lot of teachers watching this are probably in that first phase mm -hmm. of your, um, of your story where like, you're, you're building up your wait list, you get a teacher, you build up another mm -hmm. wait list and stuff like that. Like, like as you were scaling up the music school, like how are you, how, how were you feeling? Like, what was your experience as you were moving through, through those different stages? Like, were you like, w was it, was it smooth for you? Um, was it, was there like problems that you were running into? Like what were some of, um, what were some of your unique experiences as you were going through so that? I feel really lucky. It was pretty smooth. So once nice. I hired that first teacher, I thought I cannot do this pen and paper stuff anymore. Like I've got to get mm -hmm. organized. I've got to have the calendars super clear. So at that point I did join my music staff and I, and so that yeah. I've been with them ever since it's been great. Um, so each teacher has their own calendar, um, students on board through my music staff. It's not just word of mouth or text me anymore. And I enter it in like, it's an official, like they're signing waivers and all the things. So, um, the I, probably one of my biggest pain points is when a teacher leaves mm -hmm. and if they're a really great teacher and they have a lot of students, that's painful for, for me, for the student, for, for, you know, cause especially if it's, if they have a lot of first time, if they have, a, if that teacher was the student's first teacher, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that can be tricky. Um, I am pretty picky and I've gotten, better, I guess I really liked out at the beginning, but I've gotten better at hiring because I'm really looking for teachers who have the personality, um, that want to sit down and play games with students. Um, and that's almost kind of like when I walk them through, when I onboard teachers, I kind of create like, Hey, this is our, the environment and our culture. And so you'll be joining us. You'll be playing games every week. You'll, um, be playing lots of duets and doing improv and all, you know, all the very creative interactive things. Um, that I did not do when I first started because I just didn't have those resources. And that was not modeled to me by my teacher. So I'm kind of like the opposite of what my teacher was yeah. for me. So what do you feel like helped you kind of like maintain, like staying on the path or maintain that? I think that because North Star as you're my growing. business just kept growing. Like the word, it just yeah. the word of mouth. So I knew I was doing something meaningful and mm -hmm. that people liked. Um, so I thought, well, I just, I just need to make it even better. And I need to then yeah. take all the knowledge and what I'm doing. I didn't realize probably initially at first, all the things that I was doing, I really need to just iterate to each teacher, sit down and play a game, make sure you write a lesson note, all the things that I was doing that I just thought, well, it's intuitive. N not really, yeah. sometimes not. <laughs> So you just have to communicate to the teachers and say, Hey, this is the culture. You know, this is super important. Like this is going to help your retention. If you write a lesson, yeah. you play a music game and you make sure that your students really prepared for the recital in a very um, loving and peaceful way. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So awesome. So like, right now you're doing, you're doing both things, right? Like, like promoting music game club for like teachers and then yes. like still growing the music school. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, How, what's, what's your way of like 
balancing all of that in terms of time and energy. So as, so as Austin Arts Academy has grown and I've got more teachers yeah. and my personal students that I've been teaching since, you know, they were four have graduated. Mm-hmm. I just haven't been replacing those students. So, oh, so now you so have that I, time. D- yeah. So unfortunately nice. I am teaching fewer and fewer hours each year as my students graduate. Um, but that has allowed me brain space and time to launch music game clubbing and, and devote more time and energy to, um, to building that. So it's a, it's a, yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. My camera is like yes. overheating. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. It's all okay. good. Um, but yeah, that's a big thing. Like, like I'm glad that, you know, it's obviously one thing if, uh, if you are, if, you, if your, stu- your schedule is like dwindling down because of like, because students are leaving, but it, it seems like you're in a really good situation where it's like, you have that choice, but now you get to like right. actually spend more time with the music game club and stuff. Like what, what are you focusing on now in terms of the future of that? Like what's next? So music with, game uh, club. Oh, that's a really good uh-huh. question. So it's a global company. So we, we have teachers all around the world purchasing from us. And one thing that we were very, um, I guess aware of when we launched the company is, you know, in the U S we use U S letter size paper and our poster size is 18 by 24, but in other parts of the world, it's a four paper, which and a three is their kind of like poster size. It's a completely different measurement. <laughs> yeah. I've never, I've never heard of that until you oh, said yeah, that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so we were very conscientious about, okay, we need to make this accessible. So no one's printing it in a different country going, well, it, I guess I can make this work or, or the flamingos yeah. legs were chopped off, but it's okay. You know, I don't, I didn't want that. <laughs> I wanted them to experience the full experience. So we've been very conscientious about making sure it's, it is accessible just if you're going to print it. And then the new thing that we added at the very, or well, at the end of last year where was um, digital um, boom card decks. So mm-hmm. we take our beautiful art, the same concepts and we bundle it into four boom decks. And so you've got, games for beginners all the way up to advanced players, depending on the concept. Um, But we want it to be in multiple languages in the future, Spanish, French, Chinese. We want it to also expand into violin, ukulele, other, you know, clarinet, other, other taking our games and making it um, for multiple instruments. So that's, that's, that's our dream. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's just becoming more international, more accessible in other places. Right. right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So right that's, now it's, it's awesome. more music and piano based in English yeah. <laughs> with the two different, you know, sizing for the A4 and the A3 and then the U S letter in the poster. But, um, and then we also, the international crowd, they also have different terminology. So they have different. Ter- oh yeah. Yeah. So even for, for quarter notes and eighth notes, and then also a lot of them use solfege. And so like mm-hmm. the circle of fifths, some of the things that we've gotten feedback from some of our international teachers. And so we also have, so if we create a game, we also make sure that it is covered in also solfege and all the other things, the terminology, the UK terminology, if that's appropriate. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we're trying, we're trying to include everybody. So. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Is there any like, overlap in terms of the way that you've grown Austin Arts Academy and the way you're growing Music Game Club now? Like, is there any overlap in the way that you're growing those businesses? Do you feel like they're they're two different, like, yeah. two different games you're playing there? Like, yeah, how do you that's, feel? That's a, I'm glad that I'm, I launched Music Game Club while I s- still owned Austin Arts Academy because I had a testing ground, like all of our students and teachers test all of our games before we even send them out to the world. So that's just been amazing um, to get their feedback and to kind of, once you play through a game, you can kind of see the, where the pitfalls or maybe where confusion could happen. Mm -hmm. Um, So that helps us with our video tutorials because every game that we come out with, we also come out with three or four alternative ways of using that, those materials. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a great way to just recycle something that you've already paid for and you've already printed and laminated. And then it gives you just more options. Yeah. Um, So yeah, it is two different companies, but they're definitely, they're definitely connected right now as, as we we're kind of in this beginning stages. Um, Mm -hmm. 
but then once we get into other instruments and stuff, I can see how that's, it, it's going to, you know, take some extra, you know, fingers of the company to really kind of make that happen, especially the language, yeah. the language portion of it, um, translating into other languages, I think. I'm excited about because it's like that just reaches way more students and way more teachers with music theory yeah. games. But what 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 is this like vision or like mission that you have with with uh, just everything that you're that you're doing with music? Because it's awesome that you're impacting not only like the students, but then you have this to impact teachers as well. Like, how would you describe your vision, your mission with with this all? Right. Yeah. So originally just started out, I just want to reach more students with uh -huh. music and then eventually with music, art, dance, sewing. But yeah, now, now it's also in addition to really equipping the teacher, um, mm. because if we can help a teacher become more fun and engaging, then music just in general gets a, a better reputation, I guess, of being <laughs> a very uplifting experience. And it's not a super serious high pressure, high intensity experience for a child. Yeah. It, it can be more fun loving. And I don't know, kind of more like a life skill, like all, all the basics are covered and you're learning really important things. Like all the essential elements are there. It's just the approach mm -hmm. is, is a more fun and engaging and spirited environment. Like, yeah. Versus before. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I like that. I, I feel like my, um, my own vision has evolved from where it started to because like becoming a music major um like the the first mission i ever had was just like being able to share the opportunity music education with like everybody mm -hmm. in the world and then it evolved it, like it, it started from like just teaching piano lessons in my local area and then like going to online and then now i gotta like help teachers as well so i feel like like, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm touching like branches mm -hmm. and then these teachers are the branches touching leaves for students. Um, so it's awesome just being able to see what you're doing and being able to like help other teachers out as well. Yeah. Is there anything, is there anything else? Like, is there anything you wanted to share that, you know, would be helpful for teachers about your story or anything like that? I don't think so. Yeah. I just, I would encourage teachers to, to always be looking to see, you know, what, what is something new that's out there? And challenge yourself, mm -hmm. you know, digitally, we were challenged with, with going online, but it's like, there's a lot of online and other resources that are becoming available. Lots of creative people out there. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm, I'm always on the search for, you know, how can I make a lesson environment really engaging for a student? And, but yeah. I'm, I'm teaching them really important concepts and I relay that to the parents um, that is an important concept because if the parents like, oh, you played another game. Oh, you played another game in your lesson notes. Make sure you say, Hey, we played Flamingo Flats. The, you know, what is important in this game is, you know, the child's learning how to read flats on those grand staff. They're learning how to gotcha. identify what major key they're in. So it's not just playing a game, like let the parent know, Hey, we're playing a game, but it's because we're, we're doing music theory. Like that's our music theory yeah, work, like, workbook time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you're, you're still showing the parents that there's, there's value. Out right. Of this. Right. Yeah. I love it. Important. I love it. Well, awesome. Thank you for, for sharing your story. I like the, the biggest points that I am taking away right now is one, like your, like your story and just being every stage in this process has been like a, a like a story of you being very resourceful <laughs> yeah. and i think that's a quality that every teacher needs to have right. it's like when we run into these problems it's not about like oh like this is stopping me but like how can we be resourceful with the things that we already have mm -hmm. to solve this mm -hmm. um so that's what i'm getting out first and then two is that like like the experience is a huge part like i just ran a workshop um a couple weeks ago and it was all about making sure you have an experience, give your students a great experience yes. so that they can stay pay and refer, but you're like the living embodiment of that too, because you're, you're giving these students that experience that they need through music. And it's obviously helping out with the retention mm -hmm. a bunch. Mm -hmm. And then, um, the last part is like, it, like it, music should be fun. Like as simple as that. Um, there's something I wish I had when I was a kid, um, 
I mean, I can still use it right now <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to play, to play with like me and my friends too. Yes. Um, but, but I, I, I do really like, like, I'm, I'm glad you're able to share this because this is something that not only do I need, but I feel like every teacher, um, who is facing that problem of like, why are my students not enjoying the lessons and, um, or how can I make this easier for myself? Like, I'm glad you're providing that. Yeah. What, what's the best place that people can reach out to you or know more about this? Um, so they can find a um, music game club on TikTok, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram. Um, Austin arts Academy is also in all those places too. Um, so cool. yeah, I'd love awesome. to send me all the links. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll include them in the video. Okay, great. Thanks for chatting. Cool. Other than that though. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>